John, uh, so I guess you probably heard the passing numbers, just that more, more than 80% of five quarterbacks have completed against you guys. Is that, do you think that's reflective of how the team defense has performed in those games? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what the numbers say. You know, we, we definitely have to get that completion percentage down, um, and there's a number of ways to do that. It starts with us as coaches to, you know, detail out some things and change some looks and rush and cover, cover and rush, have to get a little bit better. But, you know, when you're playing good quarterbacks with good skill people, you you know, we, we played – well at times, but probably not consistent enough. So that number has to come down. We have to improve that with our pass defense to, you know, uh, be able to pr provide some resistance to good offenses. It looks alarming, you know, from the statistics. Is it alarming to you, or is it something that you feel is, is fixable and not? Perhaps it's definitely fixable. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's. I wouldn't say alarming to me. I would say that you know we know the areas that we have to get better at. And we've done that at times. You just got to be a little more consistent. And that's, and it really, though, again, it starts with us is setting it up a little bit better. You know, how I call the game a little bit better at some certain spots where, you know, you can throw a wrench into what the quarterback's seeing or, you know, when they, when they call certain plays, you'd like to be in a couple better calls here or there. But uh, ultimately, it's about all of us just improving and being a little more consistent. With Slade and Nelson's background, um, and, and quarterbacks getting the ball up so quickly. What's your apprehension when it comes to playing press man? Yeah, I think you see us. We, we do play press a little bit, you know, and, and there are certain spots that we would like to tighten up, and that, that comes down to me is calling it to get tighter. Um, but we feel good about those guys in the back end to either play off or press, and, and some of that goes into the call. Um, some of that goes into the situation in the game. You know, and uh, so we just got to, you know, do a little bit better job myself of calling it a little bit better to when we need to get tight, get tight. When a quarterback uh, is uh, changed from Andre to Marcus in the nickel when Avante was out. Uh, it just felt like, you know, both of those guys have played that spot and uh, wanted to see what Marcus could do in there a little bit. And uh, Dre came in and played and played OK for us. But, uh, you know, Marcus has been playing winning football for us and wanted to get him on the field with some other guys is getting the ball out quickly, JG. It may be quicker than you had expected. I don't know if that was the case game day, but how does it change things for you at that point when you say, all right, this is coming out really quick. What can I do to adjust to that? Yeah, you got to adjust the coverages a little bit. You know, I thought they did a good job. They mixed in probably a little more quick game than what we were expe uh, expecting. Um, but teams have done that versus us because of our D-line. So, you know, in our back pocket, we have to have a, maybe a couple more calls or me call them a little bit more um, to say, hey, this is how the game's being played. Here's what we need to do to combat that a little bit. So, and, you know, the, the rush and cover, cover and rush, though, that's all 11 guys. So, you know, when the D-line's not getting there, there's, there's reasons for that in the back end. When the back end, you know, is not – you know, covering great, there's reasons for that in the front. It's all marries together. So to play really good defense, to play really good pass defense, run defense, you need all 11 to be on the same page and execute at a high level. And, and that goes into, you know, do your job so your buddy can have success doing his. That all blends together. It's not a stretch to say personnel-wise, your D-line is the strength of your group. Hot. Overall this season, how do you think they're playing? I think they're playing well. I mean, you know, we've made some stretch. We, we've made some strides, I think, in the run game. Um, that's, I think that's improving. Um, and there's been times where our D-line has dominated games. Now, that game two days ago, like they, I, it was very apparent that they were not going to allow that to happen. So, you know, we, it, again, all 11 have to play a little bit better. We got to coach a little bit better. I got to call it a little bit better to get those guys, you know, some, some rushes where they are singled up and the ball's not coming out so fast. Just one sack, one sack at home in four games and on the road, um, 16. And you, you play good quarterbacks on the road, too. What, why is that? You know, I don't know that. Um, crowd noise. And yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just a little bit how those, the, I guess, off the top of my head, the teams that we've played at home, those styles were a little bit different, those teams that came in here and played us, as opposed to the teams on the road. Um, but we, we definitely have to look at that and say, hey, like not, not just home or away, how can we be a little bit better weekly 
to affect the quarterback a little bit more. Your blitz, number, your blitz numbers were, I guess, overall up. I don't know if you guys look at it the same way, but it seems like they was up a little bit um, this past game. But the last two drives, I think there was only one more than four-man rush. Did you feel uh, maybe looking back upon it that maybe you should have sent some more there when, when things weren't going your way? A little bit. We, we, you know, they caught a couple of pressures into some runs. Um, but, you know, when you look at it, you know, in passing situations, what they were doing, you know, they were not going to let us hit the quarterback. So you saw, like, double chips. You saw some six, seven-man protections. So, you know, when, when typically when you see that as a defense, you devout more to in coverage. You put more in coverage knowing that pressures aren't really going to get home and you're kind of leaving your cover guys out to dry. So um, I think, though, we do – I can set it up a little bit better where when teams are doing that, let's be a little more creative with how we're aligning our pieces and what we are doing to generate a little more pressure. So teams can't just say, hey, this is what we're going to do, so you have to play a certain way. I think that I can, we can be a little more, uh, we can dictate a little bit more just with the plan, how we set that up to where teams can't always dictate, dictate that. What are your uh, statistic priorities, if you could? Rank them. Wins and losses. In terms of defensive production, what's what do you uh, what do you hone in on? Uh, it, it changes weekly. You know, I mean, some games we say, hey, we got to keep the you know yards per rush down. Um, do we do we want to keep a guy? Do we want to keep the team under 100 yards passing? Explosives is always a big one for me. Explosive passes, the quickest way to get beat is get the ball thrown over your head. So that's always in the in my mind of when we set up the plan. You know, how many chances are they gonna are they gonna take to where we're not in a great coverage versus those shot plays? Um, so wins and losses to me, and then by game plan. What you decide, hey, this is what they do really well. This, these numbers have to be pretty good to give us a chance to win. Um, and and like again, that changes weekly. Coach, good question. Uh, coach, just to off your one, you blitz more. Uh, and you, you checked out, your defense checked out of the blitz multiple times, from what I understand. What do you do when they have a formation that is not accommodating to a blitz? to try to get to the quarterback. And it's obviously more than just a four down line. Yeah, by situation and formation, you can you can change some things up. So that's a good question, Howard. But I think ultimately, like, you know, when we set up the plan, we say, hey, these however many calls are very aggressive, we're going to call them and run them. Um, and, and it is what it is. Other times where if you call those calls and they're in certain formations or certain situations, you're, you're – it's, it's not good for the defense typically. So there's a couple actually that I would like to have back in that game where we were ultra aggressive to not great formations and plays that we caught pressures into. And it was like, Ugh, not that's not what I, you know, on the, on the headset, it's like, that's not what I wanted that for, you know? So, but, you know, with saying that, there's a blend of that because you can't put too much mental stress on the players of always, you know, checking out of something or checking into something. So that's always a blend of how we set it up. Where's the mental stress? Where's the physical stress within the game? Getting the ball out so quickly has been sort of a theme uh, after games just from talking to guys, and, and you, you talked about it. I think over the course of the season, quarterbacks are getting the ball out quicker against your defense than any other team. Mm -hmm. Why? What, what is it about this defense that makes that an emphasis for opposing offense? I think one personnel driven who we have in the with the front, you know, I think teams are very aware of our D line can rush. Um, and the other thing is, is, you know, because we are set up to take away some explosives, they say, OK, well, in these certain plays by the look pre snap, if the explosive isn't there and you know it's not there, Get it out of your hand. So that goes into us setting the plan up a little bit better to say, hey, let's either not show those looks, you know, or or change the pitcher pre and post snap to the quarterback, or be a little more aggressive at time with how we tighten up on people. Look at Javon Harker. He had like six sacks, I think, in the first four or five games. Hasn't had any since. Like our offensive linemen, are they playing him differently? Is he still? playing as well as he was earlier? Yeah, I, I think he's playing just as well. You know, he um, it, teams are playing him a little bit differently, and they're kind of there's a couple times where the back actually chipped his way out 
they're chipping our inside guys, you know, so they're kind of changing the chips. But he's playing well. He had a couple pressures in there. I know the sack production isn't there, but he's doing a very good job in the in the pass game of rushing the quarterback. When he gets one on ones, he typically wins those. And uh, I'm not worried about you know Graves. The production will keep coming. We've seen TJ play a lot more recently. Uh, what has TJ Edwards given to your defense? Um, I think you know from a from a standpoint of being in the right spot, playing in the run game, running the defense. He's doing a really good job. He's playing winning football for us. You see how physical he is inside. I mean, there's a couple times they ran you know, ISO plays or lead plays, and he, he took on the fullback, knocked him back, and made the tackle. Um, he's doing a good job as far as, you know, what I look for in the mic is running the show, being in the right spot, and playing winning football in the running pass game, and he's doing that. In the summer, said, we asked though, you a uh, why did Eric Wilson not work out here? Uh, a combination of kind of, of the guys that are pl that are playing well right now that we have playing. Um, I think that that's really the major reason. It's not so much what Eric uh, didn't do; it's what other guys did do. And uh, we feel like the guys that we have right now that are playing or that are backing up those spots can play winning football for us. In the summer, we asked you what you learned about this job that you only know having been in this position. Now that you've coached as a D coordinator, called games for nine weeks. What have you learned about this job? Man, that's always a good question. Uh, <laughs> coach better. Coach better. I think it's always, I always looked at, you know, everything that we do on that field, you know, and the, the completion rate, it's like I'm a DB guy. It's like, man, like 80% completion. Like, that's not, that's not great, you know. And, and it it's always comes from me is what I've learned is, is you, you improve daily. And not to say that I didn't have that mindset before I was a coordinator, but, you know, it's, it's really on, it's, you know, on myself and the coaches to say, hey, let's set our guys up a little bit better and, and strive to be a little bit better and a little more consistent with how we play the game. Um, so, you know, the, the hardest thing for me is, is not having like a, a group that I have my hands on is, is not the hardest thing, but the thing that's most different that I've learned the most is, is you have, it's, it's not just hands on one group. You got to have hands on all three groups, you know, and, um, and, and how much you coach those guys myself, it has to be impactful. Like when I tell Davion something, it has, to, it has to allow him to get better and play winning football. Same thing as when I talk to you know, Barnett or a guy in the secondary or whoever, um, to give those guys to be able to you know, make improvements, what I'm telling those guys to coach them up and serve the player and get them better. Uh, where that's a broad view where I'm sitting now, whereas when I was a DB coach, it's, it's, I wasn't worried about the D-line or the linebackers. You know, I was just handling my room. So, um, And I can obviously continue to get better and learn as we go with doing that. Going back to what you said about how certain offenses are playing you, uh, maybe the quarterback's getting the ball out quickly, the explosive play's not there for them, so they say, how much – can you dictate with pre-snap stuff and changing things that way? You can, you know, it, but when you do that, it's like, you know, we always, you know, what does this look? What's this look with this call? What do we want to show? And then you got to go through all the formations and where people are and different things like that. And without, you know, getting your guys, you know, a lot of people, here's a good one. Like there's, uh, you know, way back when, when you're studying different disguises and things, right? And you know, a, a team we did in Minnesota, a team that has the safety on the line of scrimmage, well, he plays in the deep post after the ball snapped. And I always thought to myself, you know, I got this from the players. They would they'd say, GG, like, that's all cool and everything, but I have no shot to make any play in the middle of the field because I'm coming from the line of scrimmage. So the disguise is great, but you're really hamstringing me to be able to make plays. So there's a blend of, you know, how much you can tilt the coverage and disguise and make it look really – you know, different on the quarterback pre and post snap with also getting your guys in position to get what they need to get done within the call. And there, and like everything, there's a blend to that. When can we be like really aggressive with how we're aligning people and when we really can't, you know, like, well, this guy has three vertical and he's on the line of scrimmage and this guy's flexed out hash plus two, like good luck, you know? So, um, that's always an ever evolving thing. And with situationally, where can you, you know, take those chances, so to speak, to align people certain ways? Hey, JJ, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Barnett a second ago. What's your message to him after another 
damaging third down penalty? Uh, you know, he's he's doing a good job. He's improved that part of his game. I think he's playing. He's playing. I would say. Uh, more disciplined with with what we're asking him to do with the with the penalties thing. I'm very happy with Derek. Um, you know, he, no one's going to be more harder on him than himself. And uh, but it's it's just to you know lock in and make sure that we don't have pre-snap penalties and keep doing what he's doing because he's doing a good job in the running pass game.